the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Come on now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He, he got he got to live by what he pulled from God's mouth. So, so I, I believe that the hunger and the thirsting part is left up to God. What is left up to us is whether or not we will submit and yield. So that when the Spirit of God moves, you obey. I, I, I remember Saturday morning, I went up again. I was at home cleaning up. It was years ago, man. Cleaning up, had to, just getting started on the day to clean up. Getting there, helping, doing stuff. And all of a sudden, I, heard, I get the sense saying, go pray. I said, okay, let me, let, me, let me finish this. And I got busy again. Come back and say, go pray. And I got, got busy again. And they think, so after that, then at the end of the day, I realized, I'm like, man. You see, all he can do is speak. Right, right. It, it's on you. Hmm. It's on you, but now you go obey. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and and there is, I think, lies that there is some danger, right? Because it ain't automatic. Well, and I think that was the thing. You go back to June. You're saying is people crept in unaware. Yeah. And 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 we're talking that even the 10, 12 went into the promised land to stayed in the will of God, but ten didn't. And then the whole group, though, follow those 10. Now, bringing up the modern time, how many people are being led back to what Brother Adam was saying or what Jim was talking about is somebody being institutionalized. You know, I think one of the things we want to walk away with and understand is, and you said it, I said, how do we die to that self, you know, individually right because it got to be individual lee but how about huh all i say then first of all the first question is do, do you want him dead do you want him dead do you want, yeah. do you want what do you want to get the old man dead yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 well i can i i, I cannot i i never i, I did never. Want i didn't have great <laughs> examples Yes. To to that. to uh, move forward in where I was, and uh, and the one constant draw to the church, which was my mom, even so called backslid. Yeah, yeah. You know, in different points in my life, to where, you know, she was more focused on what my dad was doing than the church and it was always the church that seemed to center her and empower her and move her forward okay yeah you know and yeah. when she was out of the church it was just chaos okay and i and i can i can honestly recall the difference uh-huh which was a pattern okay that i saw that when all hell break loose right and you get tired of that, go to the church. Okay, okay, okay. And 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 your life will be put back in order mm, okay. and you can move forward. And that's how my mom's life was during my early formative years. But when I became an adult and she was fixed okay. in the church, you know, uh -huh. once once my dad was out of the picture and uh and God was everything to her. I'm pretty sure he was during those other times, you know, when she was focused on him, but she did like Peter, she looked away. Okay. You know, and saw the wind and the rain. Yes, sir. And storm, you yeah. know, and, and, and got caught up in it. Yeah. And so that pattern was, was all I had. And so, I followed it because the outside of my mom, there was the pastor that I grew up with 
And he wasn't saying things that lined up with the word because he was saying things that was pretty much impossible because he was telling me everything I couldn't do and shouldn't do. Okay. But never how to prevent from doing that. Mm. So righteousness and holiness wasn't something that was given. It was something that you achieved on your own. Yeah, the work. In other words, is we works. Move, in other words, we moved from him performing the work yes. to us doing it. To us trying to be that. And I know my entire life when I tried yeah. to be, then I would fail miserably every time. And that was my, my example, and that's how I was. Even my father made it seem like it was impossible to be like him because he never told me any of his failures. Mm. Oh, Lord. Woo. So Woo. it was, he was perfect and I couldn't be perfect because he was always telling me everything that I couldn't do and shouldn't do. And he was getting on me about the things that were bad and would ask me, why are you doing these things? <laughs> now, well, he, he you wasn't know? in the church, though, was he? he wasn't in the church. No, no, not not until after I gave my life that day. That Remember when I was telling you? I he gave my life to Christ, and uh, I saw my dad on the street, and I stopped. <laughs> it's so funny. I stopped and told him, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saved. Woo! And the first thing came out of his mouth, is excuse my language, but this is what he see you, you smoking that shit, huh? No, he did. No, he did. No, he did. Which is what he would tell me all the time. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> and so that's what he thought. And um, Woo! and I'm like, no. You know, I said, no, I'm really, really safe. And and I told him about it. And the next thing you know, he starts going to church. Oh, okay. Okay. And then he gave his life. And <laughs> I remember pastors was talking about forgiveness. Uh -huh. And so he said, if there's anybody <laughs> that that you need that to, to forgive, he said, you need to do it now. Uh -huh. My dad used to video the yeah. messages yeah. and he's in the back. Yeah. And so I walked from where I was, I had to walk up. <laughs> In front of the <laughs> camera, under the pulpit. Yeah, yeah. Because he's in the center aisle. Because I sat, I always sat on the side toward the front. Right. In front of everybody, and then walk straight down the aisle. I walked straight to him, and my dad was just sitting there filming. And then he realized, <laughs> you see the point that he realized I was coming to him. <laughs> I saw it on his face. Woo! And I said, I forgive you. And it was like, the look was like, what did I do to you? Woo! <laughs> you know, but prior to all that, when I was living with him in Houston, Texas, uh -huh, uh -huh. he basically controlled me yeah. and controlled my life because he needed, he really needed me to help him run his business because he really couldn't trust Anybody. anybody else yeah, yeah you know and uh so that's what to me looking back that's what seemed to be his goal mm -hmm. was to control my life so that i'm always there you know for him right instead of what are you going to do with your life mm -hmm. to the point where not allowing me to to go into to college or join the military or anything. And, right. and I remember people used to tell them all the time, right in front of me, why ain't, he in, why ain't he in college? Right, right. At least let him join the military. And he would always say, no, nah, that's not what I want for him. That's not what well, I want. Yeah, I want yeah. that business. He gonna yeah. run that, this is gonna be his business one day. And then he would always throw it in my face, you know, this is this is gonna be yours one day. Exactly. And, and in my mind, I'm like, well, the day you give it to me be the day I sell it because I don't want to have nothing to do with it. <laughs> because it was like, 
It was like being in Loader Bar. <laughs> that was the bane of my existence. <laughs> and uh, and so I always rebelled there. Right. And and so there was a big rebellion. But and, and that's what I was saying because I always saw the disciplinarian and the one who was controlling and the one who never told me he loved me. Mm. I think he went to his grave without saying that. Wow. Um, but that was my experience with him. And so when I went to go forgive him, this man, when I hugged him and, and said, I forgive you, it was I like this giant weight was on my shoulder. It. But I think it Hallelujah. went on here <laughs> because he couldn't accept oh, it. So oh, right, oh, my boy. Oh, he, had this, he had this look like, Hallelujah. I think, you know, Thank like, you, oh, why would Love you even it. come to me? I ain't did nothing to you. Right. And, 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 and that's the look he had on his face. Right. But I never went back to him up because I was done with it. Yeah. And he never brought it up to me again. Hallelujah. So it was, <laughs> but that's how that went with him. So, yeah, my dad was. He wasn't an example for me. It was always, as far as being in in the body of Christ, it was right. always my mom. Right. And, and there was no men that, you know, outside of my family that was an example either because they were more so disciplinary. Because you know how that was back in the day. Right. They knew your parents and they seen you out of line. It was like they was your parents and they bust you up just the same. Yes, sir. And call. <laughs> so you get it again. <laughs> <laughs> so have you ever uh, have you ever met a guy named Andrew Murray? I'm not sure. How about Archibald Alexander? No. These men lived back in the 17, 1800s. Okay. They were dead before I showed up. Uh huh. <laughs> dead before you showed up. Right. Okay. But I found out that I found out a very interesting thing. That God can use dead people to disciple you. Being what they wrote. After all, Peter is dead and Paul is dead and yes, sir. James is dead. And, but he used them to write down things about their experience that somehow would intersect with the experiences in our lives that will cause us to consider God at those critical places. I, I read about Smith Wigglesworth and people who couldn't read like Smith Wigglesworth when he first got, Smith Wigglesworth couldn't even read when he got saved. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying, so, so God has a whole unlimited source of ways of getting truth to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he did. You might, he... Not, you might not be able to see it walking around in front of you, but see, that's the beauty of your imagination. You start reading about Smith Wigglesworth and you're like, good Lord, a plumber who when he first got saved and got so hungry for God's word, okay. his wife taught him how to read. Mm -hmm. And what that joker got into that book. Okay. He was like a bulldog with scripture. He was in there. Woo. Mm -hmm. That joke, that joker, that joker started believing God and lived in such a manner. I remember one testimony of Smith Whitworth, he got on a on a train to go somewhere in England. Mm -hmm. He got on the train and sat down. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing to anybody. It, 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 they got on and sat down. So the train began to move. All of a sudden, the people in that section, all the people in that section, all of a sudden, got the overwhelming sense. People start breaking down, start weeping, start crying. Wow. Oh, no. What? 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 <laughs> what? Why? He was he praying internally? Oh, he was doing nothing. But the presence of God was so full in his life. Okay. I'm like, so, so we, we talk about men who have a level of devotion, man that would just blow you out the water compared to some of the stuff we're seeing now. We're talking you're about talking, some we're talking, we're talking about between, commitments. Right, you're talking about between a, a Joseph and a Caleb to the other 10. Yes. Now, now, but you know, I wonder though, Bishop, because using Jimmy's thing about the guy that was institutionalized is, is it is it is it possible that the whole church, a large percentage of the church, is still allowing work to be performed on their own instead of God performing the work in them. Well, I, well, I, well like, I, like I say, I think that part is, is a two-part problem. 
part of it is, and I, and I see it every time I go back home in my hometown. Uh, the pastor pretty much is a hooper. He tries to preach from, he, he, he does a good job of preaching from the scripture, but it's just basic stuff. It's just, it's like, it's like inviting, it's like the illustration he gave me one time, he gave me the sermon, he said, I want you to go to the nursery, get all the kids from the nursery, I want you to parade them right down the middle of the aisle, right down to the pulpit. Okay. Let them parade around the church. Now, in the middle of that, in the middle of that crowd of kids, I want you to put some adults, some of the seniors. Okay. okay. And he says, this is the picture of what the church is like. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. So you got, you got seniors mm -hmm. who are stuck in kindergarten. Woo! Ooh, that was a good one. And so part of it is, is that they're ignorant of the truth. But the other part of it is that I think that the reason that they're ignorant is because they don't want. They don't want right. to pay off in the pride that is necessary to lay hold of the fullness of what God is offering. Yeah. And so we try, we think that we can make a deal. With them. We, we think we can offer, you know, well, I'm, 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 I'll, I'll give you 30%. That's the best I can do. Now. 30, that's 30%. We're making a strike. If you take 30%, we thank God like a car dealer. We try to strike up a deal with him. Right. And I think that he has to just leave us there until we realize he don't do 30%. That he didn't send Jesus to the cross to die 30% of the way. Okay, okay. Hey, Bishop, but you know that's the, that's the, the, the conflict that even Paul had. Because I, 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 re, I relate to the, the part that draws us back is we're, give, we're not giving the whole dead man, right? We, we're giving a portion of it. Because I said, Paul was saying, remember the start of the, the, the challenge in the flesh. The flesh, yeah. the flesh, I, I, I want to do this, but my flesh want to do that. And there's a warring, right? Remember saying that there's a warring in the mind. Yeah, that's an, that, that's an experience I believe is common to every believer. Every yeah. believer, right. I believe every believer is going to pass through Romans chapter 7. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and that, that's some, will, some, will, some, will, some will stay for a brief time. Some will stay for a long time. Some will never. Some will build a house. <laughs> <laughs> plant a vineyard <laughs> buy real estate <laughs> and never move on <laughs> right in other words that dead man keep <laughs> we talking about burying the dead man that joker that joker don't want to stay down <laughs> <laughs> listen that, there's a verse in Roman chapter uh, 13 the last verse Last verse. The last verse in chapter 13. Very powerful verse. Well, one, that I think, one that I think we need to always be, pay attention to. <laughs> hmm. And it is something I believe that plagues us. He says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That's that's the that's 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 the one right there. That the flesh is saying, I want you to make provision. <laughs> you will, you will yeah. make provision. And, yeah. the, and the spirit is saying, <laughs> no, I want to go this way. And if you have come to realize, you lying dog. <laughs> Every time I listen to you. <laughs> I know it. I know it. That's a problem. Every time I make a provision for you. Yeah. It always costs me more than I want to pay. Yeah. It always a... keeps me longer than I want to stay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Not, it charged me too much. <laughs> it charged me. Charged so, me more. Look, don't do it. I can't afford it. I can't afford it's, it's it. Your, it's your calling. It's a choice. He said, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. It's a cost. 
I think, brother, I think when you're talking about what they, they God was saying, you're going to die. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I think even that witnessing in those cars, seeing those people pass by was a good example of saying is, look at them. They stay on that path. Yeah. They're going to die. Or at least, well, it was more of a, are you going to stop worshiping me to yeah. look presentable to these guys? Wow. 